Welcome to our week four lecture. Um, to start, I would like to review our assignment. Um, you'll find them in the module. Uh, and I'm looking for you to create a face merge in Photoshop. Um, and you'll be combining your own face with that of an actor. Um, you can pick any scene from a television show or a movie. Um, whatever you want. Uh, I am asking that you uh, upload the scene that you would like to work with and get approval. You'll see in the course modules that there is a place for you to upload that and I would like that this week, um, I believe Wednesday. Um, and I just want to see what pictures you're going to be using to put this together so that we can move forward. Um, so uh, I'd like this to be as believable, you know, as realistic as we could possibly make it and I'm looking for at least 50% of your face to be in this scene. Um, these are the requirements that I'm looking for uh, in your project when you are uploading both your PSG and your JPEG. Um, mostly that I would like to see that you are naming and organizing your layers and uh, most importantly that your manipulations are all non-destructive. Um, which uh, hopefully you understand what that means by now by taking the beginning classes and we'll be reviewing that um, more today. So I'll be looking for of course layer masking and adjustment layers, um, filters, blending modes, all of these things in order to make your image look as realistic as possible. Here's a student sample. Um, so you can see here that we have someone else's face here in this Pulp Fiction scene. Um, this is a really great example of what I'm looking for. So I'm going to review some uh, Photoshop tools and also um, you know show you some uh, techniques that we can we can use to to do this so uh, here's a recent headshot of mine that I'll be using for our demos today um, Whenever I start a picture, I always start by copying the background, um, which the hotkeys for that is Command-J. And I'll always have that extra layer of my background to copy. Um, so, of course, uh, to quickly review, um, some things that you're going to need for this assignment, of course, will be transform tools. You can go to the Edit drop-down and use Transform. Uh, or, um, you know, to scale it or rotate it, what have you. Or, of course, you can um, use the hotkeys, which is control T, and um, that will also bring up the transform tools, all right? Um, and, of course, to mask out, let's, let's, take, let's take this figure off of this background and put it on a different one. Um, Let's just pick one from Pexels. It should have a background section here. Let's see. And, um, <laughs> all right, we'll just uh, pick, let's pick this great one. All right, and I wanted the largest it can be. All right, thanks Katya. So now, uh, let's open that. And let's let's work with it. So I'm going to put this over to the edge here. Um, there are, of course, many ways that we can make selections. Mostly I use the quick selection tool and just drag and drop to select what I want. Um, really quick, easy feature, uh, of course. But um, there are some other features I would I would love to show you. Um, of course, there is the select subject feature. Photoshop does a really great job finding the edges of the subject to the background and distinguishing what your subject is. So here we have it. Did a really great job. It even has like this hair piece over here. Um, selected. Uh, so the select subject, it's also in select. Sub uh, select and mask. All right, subject. So you can also find that in the select dropdown. Um, but when you're using the selection tools, these should be up on the top for you. So we can always enter the select and mask mode. You can see here right now my view is on a white background and it has me already selected since I had the select subject already applied. Um, you can of course refine your edges with the refine edge tool. I actually really like how the hair looks here, but 
What the Refined Edge Tools essentially does is <clears throat> work over your edges in case you have things like hair that you would like to include uh, in your picture and it, and it will uh, kind of feather that edge a little bit for you. Um, you can, uh, of course, this edge detection is really nice. It can make your edges uh, a little sharper, as you can see, right? A little more defined. Um, you're able to smooth your edges uh, if you would want to do that, which could be really helpful, um, you know, so that you don't have those weird angles and points that sometimes happens when you have a rough selection, you know, maybe down here where like the, the shirt is selected in a strange way because of the background or, or something like that. Feathering, of course, also will help feather your edges. You do want to be careful of feathering too much. You can start really uh, losing, right, your edge here and starting to look like an angel. So um, feathering really should be lower. Uh, lower is, is better, but a little feather is always nice. And uh, contrasting your edge, of course, too, will kind of really define that edge, see how sharp that that, that, that is. And shifting your edge, of course, will move it, um, which, which we, don't, we don't need. And of course, you could always invert it if you wanted to just work with the background uh, or things like that. They have different views here where you can um, see what your selection looks like with different backgrounds. Sometimes it's going to be easier for you to make your selections perhaps on black. Obviously, mine I selected on white because my background's already pretty dark and I wanted to really see my, my edges here. Um, so this is our select and um, mask um, as a... Uh, dialog box here. Um, and like I said, you should see that in the upper, the top of your page. I'll push OK. And now we have our, our selection here. Um, and I can make a mask out of this simply by clicking the mask button, right? And now we have this masked, masked image here. Um, there are, of course, mask options in the mask properties that's already open without opening your selecting and masking panel. And you can do things like feather, your edges here if you wanted to as well. You can see how that edge is becoming a little fuzzy. Um, as well as open your select and mask options uh, in this panel as well. So I'm going to select my image and I'm just going to drag it into this background that we have. Command minus to zoom out. I'm going to control T to um, scale my picture and I'm going to fit myself onto this background here. All right, so uh, there you have it. Easy enough. Now uh, I've been put into a different place. Um, the lighting matches pretty in well enough. Of course, you, you could always modify maybe the color balance of my pictures, perhaps a little too yellow, so I can start making it look a little bit more tropical by just changing up my highlights a little bit to match these very cool colored uh, leaves behind. And now there's just that slight, slight difference kind of blend into there a little more. Obviously it's doing a lot of other modifications with my hair and things like that. And you could just keep working on that by making clipping masks and holding alt and attaching that to the layer underneath it. You know, you can bring up your grays maybe if you're feeling like that's getting to be a little bit too intense and that's a little too much, but now at least you can see my hair. It doesn't just blend into my, my, uh, my shirt. And you know, you could use the brush tool of course with white or black in order to modify, um, your, uh, mask here. So, you know, um, the reason that we're working non-destructively is if you make a mistake like, whoa, and oh wait, let me just make it brighter so you can see it. Right. And you accidentally, um, erase part of yourself, you can simply push um, X to, you can see my colors toggling here, and use white just to bring that, bring that back. I do have a little bit of my background layer still attached to it, right? It was, it was masked out, so. All right, so um, really, really basic here. Uh, clipping masks we have. Um, we went over some of our panels over there, our selection tool, right? Of course, we have these other selections, the uh, polygonal lasso tool and our marquees. And again, I want to reiterate 
that we are working non-destructively. So we should be able to always go back to the original pictures um, if we need to do that. Uh, okay, so... <clears throat> So uh, let's let's work with uh, this picture, and, and I'm going to just move forward here uh, by um, putting putting the image together. Okay. So um, my picture that I picked is this scene from Black. I mean, uh, uh, what what is this? Um, Scarlet Witch, right? I asked my roommate who I should put myself into for my lecture and he suggested this. So we're gonna work with that. I'm gonna put my face into that that image here. So I'm gonna start by grabbing my image. Uh, I can just push uh, Command and click and it will grab my selection. And I'm going to drag it over into this image here. I'm obviously a lot larger than this picture, so I'll have to scale it down by the transform. All right, make myself a little smaller. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is bring down the transparency of this layer here. And I want to match our pupils up as well as I can. Generally speaking, if you can get the eyes to line up, the rest of the features should kind of fall into place. So I'm going to do control T again and start working with matching, matching the features in this scene. Right, we're going to have to do a little, a little rotation here. All right. And I'm also going to use these other features here, such as skew distort, and distort to try to line up our features just a little bit more. Her eyes are a little more spread out than mine. Maybe to try to line up the jawline just a touch better. When this starts happening and I have too much of my image off of the page, I honestly prefer to crop it um, so I don't have to worry about scrolling all the way down here when I'm trying to transform my, my image. So I'm gonna go back to my transform here and now you can see here it's lined up with the bottom, so it's gonna be a lot easier for me to try to match this. So I'm going to move the jaw over a little bit. My head's a little too long, I'll just make it a little square. And I'm just trying to match my pupils up with those red marks. All right, so uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. I think I'll I think I'll leave that at that for now. All right. So I'm going to uh, just continue to modify my mask here. I'm going to start bringing down the opacity a little lower, <clears throat> and just try to blend this in a little bit better. Our eyebrows are almost perfectly lined up, so that looks really nice. I'm going to bring up this opacity too and start seeing how they're working together here. So I'm going to uh, remove that hair that's in the picture here. All right. And I'm just going back and forth here, kind of pushing and pulling my image. Her lips are huge compared to mine, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to work mostly with my mouth because her mouth is just giant. Um, all right, so let's continue here. I'm also going to, of course, totally open up the eyes because I need to have those glowing pupils, right? There we go. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, obviously, I'm going to want to make some modifications to the light, to the color, um, and, and things like that. Um, so, uh... I could do that in, of course, many different ways using blending modes um, and things like that. So um, one thing that I would try, of course, is copying the background and putting that on top here and trying a color blending mode. Um, you can see how it's really made the skin turn super pink um, and, and matched uh, 
I can see here when I'm toggling that that I don't have my mask totally um, empty here on the hair. So I'm just going to make sure I don't have any dark spots here. Okay. Um, and now when I toggle this, at least it has that red matching a little bit more in the skin tone. It's still not perfect, but we're getting there. I think so we have this on color here. Of course, I could also do that um, by putting this on color here as a blending mode and just selecting colors from the background to start uh, modifying what the face looks like here. So maybe I'll just bring this down to here and start adding red right to match the rest of this image. All right, and, and since it's on its own layer, we can always go back and forth here to get rid of that, right? We're working non-destructively, like I said, so. And I would also attach that as a clipping mask to this layer so it can come together. So what else could I do here? Um, I would uh, darken the face, right? Um, <clears throat> of course, you could also work with color balancing, like I showed you in the previous one, perhaps. Um, perhaps adding some more red and yellow. Well, it's not really that yellow here. It's kind of blue. Okay. Oh, the color balance worked pr pretty nicely here, so it's really uh, affected my highlights, my shadows, something that's a little bit more realistic here. And I think that I would also darken the face, right, in that original image. Um, the uh, the character has super dark inset eyes, right, he heavy shadow. I don't have that here. Could do that two ways. You could, of course, play with levels. Um, maybe really bring, oh, let's make that a clipping mask, of course. Maybe really bring down the blacks here. Um, maybe uh, even just bringing down the grays and making that really dark. Normally when I'm working with levels or curves layer, I change my opacity to lumosity. This has to do with affecting simply the color, uh, excuse me, simply the value of your, of your color choice as opposed to the color. So when I'm talking about the value, I'm talking about how bright or dark, how much black or white is in your hue color. Um, so you can see here that this is just modifying the uh, color to make it, uh, excuse me, modifying uh, the values as opposed to when it's on normal. You'll see a lot more of those oranges pop up and stuff. It's not cute. So um, I'm going to bring this down to Lumosity and it makes that a little um, less gross there. And I'm honestly going to just mask out this part that's a little orange. That's already better. Uh, and of course, I could bring down even my whites here to really try to get that dark lighting that they have here. Okay, that's not so bad. Okay, it's still a little orange to me. That's better. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess I can get rid of this layer because it's not really that useful for me. That's fine. Really low. All right. Um, <coughs> um, and uh, the last thing that I could show you, of course, would be um, dodging and burning uh, in a non-destructive way. Um, and you do that by first filling your layer here with 50% gray. Oh, let me fill it in to 100%. This is too light. All right, and then we're going to change our blending mode to overlay. Now, in all of these third options of blending modes, they're contrast blending modes. These are to darken. These are to lighten. And these are for contrast. So if you're starting off with 50% gray, that is essentially transparent, and anything lighter than gray will become lightened, and anything darker than gray will become darkened. So let me show you. We have a gray layer here. Again, this is to work non-destructively. And 
Um, let's say I just want to try to lighten up this part here. I'll bring this down a touch. And I can start lightening that. Maybe make the eyes glow more, I don't know. Um, and of course, the same is true with using black. You know, this, this was a really dark part in this original image, so I'm just going to try to darken that up a little bit more. And you can see here how that has changed, changed my image a little bit. I don't really like this lightening here. I'm just going to try to get that to go away a little bit. I think it's a little too bright. And I'm just going to paint a little bit of that 50% gray back onto it. So I'm just going to mask this part out just a touch. 9%. Let's bring this up. All right. So um, I'm still not really thrilled with the color here. Let me just modify my... shadows so that that part isn't so orange. That looks better. That's better. Okay, cool. All right, great. Um, so that's generally here uh, the basics to um, what I wanted to show you. Um, here we are with uh, my face here matched into um, this image here of our, of our Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Um, and it's relatively believable, right? You can't totally see any seams. Um, the features are lined up pretty well. Uh, it, it, it came together pretty, pretty nicely. Um, so, uh, if we go back to this image here that we were working with before, I just want to show you a couple more things. Um, the first one being, uh, here we have, uh, some image here on a black background. If things are on white or black backgrounds, it makes it easier, A, to select them from the background, or B, use blending modes um, to remove the background to add the, the images together here. So I'll show you what I mean here. I have my image here that I placed. I'm going to scale it, right, Command T, and bring it out to my edge. Here, all right. And now what I'm going to use is one of these lightning modes. And you can see here how it's starting to add itself to the picture. Um, and the background is totally removed, right? Because it's black. So um, that's not so bad. I would bring this down a little bit if we're trying to make it a little more realistic. And then I would mask out you know, anything that might be on the face here because that's not a good spot for the bubbles. So I'm just going to take that off here. And now there's no no bubbles on the figure. Um, easy enough to do. You know, this is on screen at a pretty low opacity. Sometimes you might want to use, you know, one on screen and then, you know, one on lighten or one with colored. And you can get um, some pretty fantastic effects. And I'll bring that down just a touch. There. And now you have, a, like, a nice highlighted edge and some some nice color there. I can bring this one down to touch too. And that one on. I like those crisp corners, crisp edges, I should say. There's no corners on bowls. All right, and you can see here how I'm starting to put those together, um, you know, and have this floating bubble effect. Some of these I still am not a huge fan of, so I'm going to mask that out a little more. The ones that are, you know, super bright or something, you can just mask to make it a little bit less distracting, a little more believable, if you will. All right. You can do this with fire. You can do this with bubbles. You can do this with clouds. Uh, really nice ways uh, to, to work here. And, of course, if you're looking to add drama with clouds, you would be using one of the darker blending modes um, as well. So um, the last thing I want to review here is... Um, the liquify tool, um, the liquify filter, I should say. Um, 
And if you want to work with the liquify filter, um, you need to uh, convert your uh, layer to a smart layer. You can do that by right clicking here and converting it to a smart object. And you can see here that the mask is gone, um, but uh, don't freak out, it's still there. You can always um, double click these options here and um, see your mask if you need to go back to it. It's in a separate file, but you can modify it if you need to do that. Let's open that image again. So, where's my, where's my headshot? Okay, so here we are with our smart object here. <coughs> All right. So um, the reason that we want to make this into a smart object is because if you make any edits with um, a filter edit, you can go back and change it and it'll start listing it to you. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Um, first, I'll show you what the liquify tool looks like in our filters. Um, now my computer doesn't have, uh, it's a little older, so it doesn't have the processing of some of this. I do uh, encourage you to experiment with that. But just to review what some of these um, tools are here in the Liquify tool, this tool would be used to push things forward. Um, and uh, the larger your brush, you know, the more it could, uh, you know, affect something in a way that might seem a little bit more realistic. You know, maybe if you want to bring the shoulders down, something like that. Um, you know, all these tools are kind of what they use to make, you know, celebrities look really skinny or... Um, you know, whatever that they're doing in, in magazines. You can use these kind of tools for. Um, the next one is the reconstruct tool. Um, that's just to go back. The smoothing tool is exactly what it sounds like. It will smooth those edges there. All right. Um, we have uh, these tools. This one, I believe, is called the Pucker Tool. The Pucker Tool will um, make things smaller, so if I were to hold it over my eye, um, I could make it smaller. Very, very scary. Um, but of course, you know, if, in practical uh, application, you know, maybe you want to use that to, to, you know, maybe people do that to make their nose look really bitty, um, you know, with a couple simple clicks. Uh, I've used this before, you know, um, if people want to look smaller in pictures, sometimes they have a tummy. This one's a good one. Um, and then we have the bloat tool and the bloat tool is to do the exact opposite. So if I wanted to say, make my lips look more like, you know, the, the red, uh, Scarlet Witch, excuse me, then I could make my lips look larger by bloating them. You know, you could also do this for your eyeballs, you know, just center it. And the pupil, you know, of course you could you could keep going for all of infinity and just really make yourself look like an anime character. Um, uh, right, so that's gonna be with the, the bloat tool. Um, and then of course you can you can go back to, uh, to to what you're doing for using your mask and things like that. So uh, here are your tool options. I of course used the hockeys, you know, the brackets to make my my tools um, bigger or shorter. You know, you could keep you know reshaping the face perhaps by uh, you know, you could bring in the, the jaw more, you know, whatever people might want to do to pictures to make them look totally crazy. Um, you know, maybe bring down the hairline, that, that kind of thing, you know, bring up the chin if you want to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, of course, um, I, I, I do, uh, encourage you, like I said, to work with the face aware liquify. That's what you would use this for here, this option here. Um, again, my, my computer just doesn't have the processing for it. Um, but you can see here, uh, the different options that you can have when it is monitoring a face where you can make the eye size larger. You can, um, you can make them higher right on the face. You can tilt them in. So the outside of it might tilt up a little bit. It makes people look a little happy. Happier. Eye distance, of course, spreading them out. There's, uh, you can move the nose up and down as well as make it wider or narrower. The mouth, of course, you can smile, make it smile more, bring up the edges. Uh, upper lip, lower lip, right, making them fluffier. The mouth width, how wide out it is, um, where it is on the face, higher or lower. So there's a lot of options here. Um, face shape, right, you can make the forehead smaller, you can make the chin smaller, bigger, make the jawline more narrow. Um, these are all uh, really great 
features here um, and it might help you a lot if you have to you know slightly modify your face um, to to make it fit because of a perspective change or something like that all right and now we have this ridiculous version of my face all right so um, that is that I'm going to stop here uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions and good luck enjoy